Hey friends, so today we're talking twist. Now, if you're coming over here from TikTok, I already did a shorter video about twist, but we're gonna go a little bit more in depth today and we're gonna talk a little bit more about why twist is important. So, if you've been practicing with your wire hook and your fiber, we're gonna just hook in with our hook here, give it a little bit of twist, and draft out some fibers. Now I'm creating an S twist. I'm going clockwise with my hook. And let me show you the reason why twist is so important. So you see how thin this yarn is down at the bottom here. With twist, it keeps your fibers together. Now if you give it just a little bit of a tug here, you can kind of feel it pull against itself. If you don't have enough twist in your wool, I'll show you as I draft out just a little bit more and we're gonna be losing some of the twist. What happens is as you give a little bit of a tug on that fiber, oh, it came apart. It's because there wasn't enough twist all the way through. So I mentioned S twist and Z twist. Now, if you spin clockwise, you are going to get what we call an S twist. And what that does is it's the way the fibers lay, which angle they lay. Is it gonna be either this direction or is it gonna be this direction? So with an S twist, like so, the fibers are gonna be laying this direction. With a Z twist, like so, your fibers are gonna be laying this direction, okay? Now, the reason why this is important is because later on, when you go to ply your yarn, you're gonna to wanna to go the opposite direction. That's what gives plied yarn its extra strength. And also, the Z-twist and the S-twist will work against each other so that they will keep the yarn together and keep it nice and lofty. Um, you may want to overspin just a little bit. Now, as we're talking about twist, I'm gonna get just a little bit more yarn created here. So as we're talking about twist, you'll know when you have enough twist in your yarn, when your yarn curls up on itself just a little tiny bit. Now, this, if you can see, doesn't quite twist the way I want it to. It's a little loose. So if I put a bunch more twist in there, it'll add more strength and watch what happens here. Oh yeah, we got some really good curl there. Now we wanna keep it nice, nice and taut while we're doing this. We don't want it to twist all up in and on itself while we're trying to spin it but we do want to keep that twist in there in order to give the strength to the yarn. So again, oop, see, it all twisted back up on itself. I didn't have enough at the end near the hook, so it just kind of snapped off a little bit. But if we just hook back in here and we're gonna just twist a good amount here, we'll get a little slub going on in there. When you give it enough twist, you're gonna be able to draft against your yarn, and there we go. So the twist is coming out, but we gotta add some more because it's gonna fall apart if we don't. So we're adding more twist, adding more twist. This is the other thing that causes the fibers to latch together right where your drafting is. So we'll pull a little bit of that out and we'll watch some of that twist up real good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop it off the hook here. And we're just going to add it to the end of the hook, or rather the shaft of the hook. And we are going to just roll it up neatly on there. Maybe go up and down a little bit so that it kind of spreads those fibers out. We'll loop that back through the hook. 
so that it has a little bit of something to hang on to as you're twisting. And we will draft out some more fibers here and continue adding more twist. See how neatly that works? Just keep on twisting. And like I said in the video prior, if you want to add more twist a little bit faster, you can roll your spindle up the side of your leg while you're drafting your fibers. Makes the process go just a little bit faster. Okay. Okay, so now that we're learning about twist and what it takes to keep the yarn together, <clears throat> I will show you the difference between an S twist and a Z twist. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a little counterclockwise spin. And if we look really, really closely at that wool, what we've got right now is we've got an S twist going on. It makes the shape of an S. If we go the opposite direction and we go clockwise, those fibers lay out like a Z. So when we're plying, we want to start one direction and we twist all of our singles. Now that's what an individual strand of yarn is called. We twist all of our singles the same direction. So if you have a bunch of yarn that you're gonna create and you've decided that you wanted to ply it in a two or three ply, you have to remember to twist all of that yarn the same direction. Because when you go to ply it, you're going to go the opposite direction. So if you start with an S twist, then when you go to ply, you need to switch over to a Z twist. So either clockwise, then ply counterclockwise, or start counterclockwise and ply clockwise. I'll show you a little of an example of what plying looks like. Okay, so I have a couple of singles that I have already spun up, and these were spun in clockwise fashion. And I'm using a little cheapy spindle that I got several years ago just for fun. So since I already spun clockwise, we're going to now spin the twist counterclockwise in order to ply these together. So you see we have two strands. Let me get this mess out of the way. We have two strands, and now we're going to be spinning the opposite direction so that those two strands start winding together. This creates extra strength for your yarn and also makes it a little bit thicker. Now again, when you ply, you want to make sure that that yarn is going to twist up on itself. Might actually add just a little bit more twist so that there we go. See how that twists back up on itself and this is applied yarn. So if you look very closely, we'll see if the camera can catch this. There are two strands that wrap around each other. That is plying. So you can see how important twist is when you're working on your yarn. It gives you strength, it gives you durability, and <clears throat> it helps keep all those fibers together. Now, some yarns don't require as much twist. If you have a longer staple, now what a staple is, is a staple is an average overall length of the fibers that you're working with. So, <clears throat> for example, this wool right here has a fairly decent sized staple. It's about two or three inches that you can see. Those are the individual hairs. And then if we grab a piece of cotton, 
which I just happen to have one right here off camera. <clears throat> so some cottons have very short staples. So if I pull some of this out, you see that those are somewhere between a half inch and an inch. So the wool <clears throat> will require less twist to keep it together. The cotton with a shorter staple will require a lot more twist because those fibers have to lock onto each other when you twist them in order to maintain its strength and integrity. So now that we've talked all about twist, in the next video, we're probably going to talk about setting your twist and how to finish out your yarn. Have a great day, everybody.